So Southern Idaho is known for its agricultural region, which is probably the chief uh, economic resource in that area. But a secondary uh, big industry in Southern Idaho are its rocks. And I'm here at pretty much the Southern edge of Idaho, right near the Utah border, um, south of the town of Oakley. Um, and what we see here is uh, some really interesting rocks that are actually mined and quarried uh, and used pretty extensively, not just locally and regionally, but all over the world. This is a, a big business in this part of Idaho. So we're gonna take a chance here to look at these rocks and what they can tell us about this region. And so as we kind of look at the ground here, you'll see that um, there's some rocks down here that are exceptionally kind of sparkly uh, they've got some attractive and large uh, mica crystals. This is muscovite mica on this face here. And what's maybe what's what's most notable about these rocks is not only uh, sort of the shiny aspect of the the muscovite, but that these rocks also split very evenly along uh, these layers here that are the natural uh, layers of deposition, what we call bedding layers. So these rocks are, um, we're gonna walk to a little better spot to, to look at them in a little better detail. These rocks are from the Proterozoic uh, Eon, or period of Earth's history. These rocks are around maybe eight to 900 million, million years old. They're exceptionally old and they're metamorphic rocks. Uh, mainly these are quartzites. In places we have other rocks called schists. And these rocks were laid down as layers of sand and mud along the margin of ancient North America. So as ancient North America was being weathered by rain, uh, rivers and streams were transporting that sand and mud to coastlines. This was a long time ago in Earth's history, 800, 900, 900 million years ago, like I said. And that was a time when we didn't have uh, multicellular or complex forms of life and so you can kind of imagine no trees no vegetation a very denuded landscape um, and as these sand and mud layers were laid down of course they became sandstones and mudstones or shales um, but later due to tectonic forces um, the area was compressed those rocks were buried and metamorphosed and so those sandstones became quartzites, which is a harder, more fused version of a sandstone. And the, the mud layers with the finer sediments in them, they uh, became metamorphosed into schists or these kind of mica-rich layers here. And in the process of doing so, so created this really uh, interesting rock that's extensively cored. You can see there's a pit that's been dug here uh, by some of the local uh, mining companies that uh, lease this property and then quarry these rocks. And this type of rock here, you could see again why it's maybe so attractive. Um, it's, it breaks perfectly into these sheets that are anywhere from quarter of an inch to a little over an inch thick. Um, and these rocks have this sort of, again, attractive surface uh, where they kind of glitter in the sun with uh, the mica crystals in it. Uh, so they're very attractive. And because they're so durable, because they're made primarily out of quartz, um, even though they're pretty thin layers, um, they hold up really well. So these are quarried out as flagstones um, used for landscaping and building materials um, for all sorts of projects. And they're sold as a, as, as a commodity as Oakley stones. So there's big companies out here that uh, they quarry this out. A lot of it involves hand splitting and using chisels to break the rocks into layers and then stacking them up and organizing them uh, by size. But this is actually a Proterozoic quartzite uh, that we find south of Oakley that uh, was formed by these metamorphic processes. So pretty cool. Another uh, little interesting fun fact about this part of Southern Idaho and some of its unique rocks. So the Oakley Stone of South Central Idaho.